Hello Internet! 2013 is coming to a close, so I thought it was appropriate to share 13 books that I really, really liked this year. I was looking through my Goodreads to see which books are the best, and it was really hard to pick. Not because I read a lot of good books, but it was because I didn't read that many good books, which is so depressing. Luckily enough, I have like 13 that I would want to talk about. Oh, by the way, I've read books, like physical books this year, as well as listened to audiobooks, so I'll be talking about the audiobooks too. The first one I have here on my stack is, of course, uh, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Definitely one of my favorite books of all time so far. I read it earlier in my life, I think in middle school or freshman year of high school, but I just don't remember the, any of this plot at all. So basically the story is about Pony Boy, and he is a greaser, and there's this sort of social divide between socias and greasers, and socias are basically really rich kids and greasers are basically really poor kids. And so there's a hierarchy and they always beat each other up and have rumbles and stuff like that, and it's really interesting. The next book I have here is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. She was an excellent writer, a very inspirational one, and a very complex one as well. This book is not an easy read. I, yeah, I can't stress that enough. A lot of people pick it up because it's one of those books that you should read before you die, but keep in mind that this is an extremely dense read. It takes place within one day, and it's this thick. The reason why it's this thick is because it has omniscient perspective and it goes through different people's perspectives along the book. The next book I have here is The Savagery of Bone by Timothy Matthew Perez. I interned for this small publication company called Moontime Press and so I got a few little books of poetry along with it and my favorite of all of them is The Savagery of Bone. The reason why it's so good is because it, it has a sort of narrative in it even though it's like a group of poems that should not be, you know, related to one another. The main focus of this book is about the author's father, who is a war veteran, and once you actually finish the book, you kind of have a, a good picture of who this father was and how broken he was. I'll leave a link below on how you could get it, because it's not one of those books that you could just get off of Amazon, so I'll leave a link below if you're interested and you want to read a nice book of poems. Yeah, I really like this book, House of Leaves by Marcus E. Daniel... Daniel Lewiski. Even though it looks like a textbook, which it's supposed to because it's a satire of a textbook, you fly through it because some parts it, it'll look dense and like, you know, you're reading a textbook, but then you get to these parts where it's just really one word per page and you just fly through it. Oh my goodness, it is kind of scary. I got to this one part and I was just, I was really spooked. Like, I, I needed to read this book around other people because I couldn't read this alone. I was just so scared. Next book I have here is Boy Meets Boy by David Levithan. I love this book so much. It's the first book I've ever read by David Levithan and I definitely am going to stand by the fact that this is probably his best book. It was so well written, the characters were awesome, and I cared so much about the relationships within this book, romantic or not. The next book I have here is A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin, and I like the, all the books in the series. Among my favorites is A Clash of Kings. This is also a really political novel. There's now, I mean, there's action going on because war starts in this novel, and that's why it's called A Clash of Kings. All the big lords in Westeros are declaring themselves kings and starting wars. A Storm of Swords has got to be my favorite book out of the series. If you want plot, just read the story. Just read. The Song of Ice and Fire series, but really read The Storm of Swords. I recommend it. I recommend it. I'm too lazy to get the book right now. It's in, it's in my big Milton book. Yep. Paradise Lost. I loved that 
piece of literature so much. I took a class on Milton and we had to read Paradise Lost. Best class I've ever taken. The best class I've ever taken. I've gotten so much out of it and I feel like it's one of those books where you're just gonna reread it in your later years and then find different things that resonate with you because of your experience with life. That That's one of those books. Now this book is on my Kindle which it, I don't really have a Kindle right now, it's just on a Kindle Cloud on my laptop. I read off my laptop a lot and it's kind of straining on my eyes so I should probably cut down. On my Kindle I have Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. Oh my goodness, definitely one of my favorite books of all time. It is such a sweet novel about two kids pretty much falling in love. It deals with homosexuality, with identity, with family and the the parents in that book are so involved in the story that it it just makes it even more magical another book i read on my kindle was anya's ghost by vera Bros brosko it's a graphic novel about this russian second generation american and she has to deal with how she's different and how she's a little bit more curvy than, you know, the popular girl who's this all-American blonde girl. Starts off with Anya accidentally falling inside of a well and meeting this ghost that lives in there. And then, obviously, conflicts ensue. I love that book so much. Another book I've read off of my computer is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. It's actually like a non-fiction book. Sylvia Plath's life and her mental illness. She was in this world where she had all these promises ahead of her, but then she did, felt like she was going nowhere, and then she has this mental illness, and... Recipe for disaster. Now the rest of the books I'm going to tell you are audiobooks. I just finished this book recently. It's called Hatchet by Gary Paulson. It's another middle school read. It's one of those books that you're supposed to read like in 6th grade or 7th grade. I did read it, I think in 6th grade or 7th grade, but I don't remember anything that happens in that book. I don't think I had very good reading comprehension skills back when I was younger. Hatchet is a survival story, but the twist is the person who's surviving is this 13 year old kid who has very boy scout knowledge of how to survive. It starts off with him inside of a plane and he's going to Canada to see his dad. The first thing that happens is that the pilot gets a heart attack. The plane crashes and he's in and the kid, Brian, is in the middle of nowhere. And it's so insane how there's not really not any other characters interacting with him. Well obviously he's like by himself the entire time. Even though I was listening to it in the audiobook. It was such a page turner. I just kept wanting to listen and finish it. So I, I ended up listening to the, the entire audiobook within one day. Another book that I listened through my ears was Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. I really liked the Ender's Game though. It's a very well thought out, very deep and intricate sci-fi. I don't really read a lot of sci-fi, but Ender's Game I could see being my top favorite sci-fi book of all time. But we'll see, you know, I'll read more. Ender's Game is about this little kid named Ender. It starts off with him being six years old. And in this future, I wouldn't say it's dystopian. It's a very different society from what we live because they're in the midst of war. Well, I guess we are in the midst of war too. They're in the midst of war against these things called buggers. But Ender, he is extremely smart, very tactical, and He's just a huge genius, and so by the age of six, he gets recruited into this camp and learns all of these war techniques in order to defeat the buggers. So yeah, that's how, that's how all that starts. It's a really good book. I love it so much, and if you're so caught up about the author of the book, you just gotta separate the artist from the art and enjoy the art. My next book is another book by Orson Scott Card. It is a sequel to Ender's Game called Speaker for the Dead. Speaker for the Dead is probably my favorite book out of the entire series of Ender's Game, but I haven't really finished it yet. I heard Xenocide is actually very good too. But Speaker for the Dead is, it doesn't have very much action in it. There's not a war going on so much as there is like anthropological research and studying of a different society and different way of life. It made me think a lot, and I love those books. Well, I hope that was 13 books. If it wasn't, then pfft, 
I haven't really finished off this year, so it kind of feels wrong making a list of books that I really liked of 2013, even though 2013 is not really over. But in my December wrap-up, I'll tell you which books that I really liked then, too. And also, I really hope that I recommended some good books to you, even though I have really weird taste in books, as many people on booktube have said about me, but yeah! Tell me what your favorite books were in 2013 if you'd like, I don't know. And yeah, I'll see you guys in another video, and uh, bye!